Okay. Last Dance, Michael Jordan documentary, episode seven and eight last night. I took a whole bunch of notes on it. Um, I want to kind of run through as much as we can on it. Uh, So, first thing I want to bring up, did you remember that John Calipari ever had the New Jersey Nets in the playoffs? Yes. I did not even remember that. When they brought it up, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, everybody talks about him being such a failure in the NBA. I mean, the man made it to the playoffs. Like, that's Pretty damn good with a team like that. Like, I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of crazy. Sam Cassell, Keith Van Horn, Kerry Kittles. I mean, crazy. He made the playoffs, and then he got fired early in the next year. So, is what it is. Uh, the Let's talk about the crazy-ass rumors that his dad's death was, like, tied to his gambling stuff. I, Joseph Gomez jumps in and said, Kerry Kittles was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, all those players are pretty good. Like, he... he Created a pretty good team there. Um, couldn't do anything with them in 99, which is why he got fired when they started 3-17. and 17. But, yeah, uh, the all of this stuff about his dad's death, all the rumors and all that, the, it, like, it's one thing today to have it on blogs and, and whatever else, where it's social media and everything's a conspiracy theory. The amount of stories that came out about this really shocked me. Like, I, I, I remember it going on, but I did not remember so many actual news stories about it. I just remembered people talking about it, like on sports radio and stuff. Did, did that surprise you at all? Um, I don't remember. Well, I mean, we were pretty young when that happened. I don't remember the media coverage requesting it and talking about it. I remember it the older I got people referring to it. It just seemed irresponsible. Yeah, I, th- I think that was pretty irresponsible. Um, Reinsdorf was still paying Jordan's basketball salary while he was playing baseball. Yep. Um, that seemed a little odd, which also fed into the conspiracy theories of uh, he was suspended for however long. Um, I thought that was a little weird. The uh, The timing of his comeback, coming back in March, you know, right before they're getting ready to go into the playoffs, all that kind of stuff. That seemed a little weird. Uh, all right, here, Matt jumped in for uh, for the Tony Ferguson thing, the orbital fracture. It's probably close to six months with healing and then getting him back to being able to take a punch. So, I mean, it could be it could be like nine months. It could be a year. I mean, he's got to go through training camp, all, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be a little while. Um, the So, the timing of the comeback in March, what right just before happened the playoffs. The, it, hang on now, hang on. It was only in March because baseball went on strike. Nobody that's, could predict that. That's so, not that's not weird or abnormal. It's it's something that nobody planned, especially him, because he's not like super involved in the players' union for baseball. Now, so he didn't know that this was coming. But well, once that's it happened. So, he was sitting around. He said, well, "Shit, let's just go play ball." He he wanted that competition. He wanted to be able to play something. Um, which leads to the other question of. With like without the MLB strike, would Jordan have come back to basketball? Yes, you think so? He wouldn't have came back that year, but he would have came back. I don't know, hundred percent. I think if he's fighting for a an MLB like roster spot, he wasn't close to making an MLB roster spot yet. Terry Francona said no, if he yet. had fifteen hundred at bats, he probably in his year and a half of playing baseball had two hundred at bats. Yeah, he wasn't close. He needed at least five more years of baseball to get to the fifteen hundreds, and then maybe he could have made an MLB roster spot. Agreed, but I, the, in the minor leagues, they don't play one hundred sixty-two games. No, no, they don't. But you don't, what, you I, don't get what I was curious about a year. is, it, it, yeah, I understand what Francona said. Uh, Matthew Miller jumped in. He said, um, fifteen hundred at bats is three to four years." Yeah, I understand that. Not, not in the minors, it's not. In the big it's, leagues, it is when you average 300 at-bats a year. Yes. It's in so, the minor leagues, <laughs> they don't play 162 games. Yeah, they don't play as much. They don't get as many at-bats. I understand. I'm curious if he still had that challenge. And he was still fighting for that. He's he not, had he's something not to work that towards. carrot for five years. You don't think so? He'll know. He'll okay. know. Okay, all right. Uh, the faxed press release. With the uh, the I'm back, incredible. Looking back on it, I mean, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Seeing it in newspapers, seeing it on Sports Center, 
And it's all he had to say. Like, there's all these people that drop press releases and all this crap nowadays. With him, it was very simple. Like, there's you can fluff it up with all the other crap at the top, but when it came down to what the actual statement was, I'm back. You don't get any better than that. I thought that was fantastic. Um, let's see. the Oh, the first game back against the Pacers, where he is, and you, you've seen it through this entire documentary. You remember it like it was yesterday, how well-dressed, how meticulous he was with his uniform, with everything. Like, the man was perfectly put together at all times. In that first game back, without his dad, he had his shorts on backwards. Now, it's one thing to go out with your shorts on backwards initially. He did not change it for the entire ball game. You think that's a superstition thing, or or just he never even thought about it? I don't think he ever thought about it. I don't think he even acknowledged the fact that they were on backwards the entire time. And you might be right. Uh, Damien jumped in on YouTube, said MJ should have stuck to Hollywood when he took time off from basketball because he sucked at baseball. Yeah, like I think I think he had room to improve. He definitely had potential. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> Matt said Space Jam was the reason he came back. Yeah, that's. <laughs> It might have been, if you think about it. The timing was pretty crazy. Uh, Matt Miller, MJ in 97, had 434 at-bats. Uh, he said it's uh, it's three to four years, and then he said also Tebow hit 273. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, the uh, it, it may have been three to four years, but uh, I don't know. I, I think he, I, I really think he might would have stuck around in baseball if they hadn't had that, that strike. I, I think he saw because he he left before the uh, the NBA strike. So anyway, all right. Uh, so that emotional issue. All right, the playoffs uh, that year against the Magic that changed his number from forty five back to twenty three. There's a rule that says you cannot change numbers in the middle of a series. Like once you have a number assigned, that's your number. And it kind of goes to show that there are some of these rules in all of these organizations that really don't matter. And I want to know when that rule was written. I, I wonder if it was after. I'm certain it was after. Maybe so. Maybe so. Because I was I was looking at it, and I was like, I know there's a rule. And I went and I looked it up last night, and I'm like. I'm, cer- I'm certain that is after that. Had to be. And also, it's a rule that does not matter. It's a dumb rule that does. It's. Once again, we have rules that don't affect anything to do with the game. Which is ex- exactly what this I was is, saying. This is not football where three offensive linemen might look a little bit alike, and so we're going to change jerseys, and therefore, you know, maybe they were preparing for this one guy, but now they're getting another guy, and they don't recognize him. This is basketball. Everybody knows who everybody is. You're playing yeah. with the least amount of clothes as any professional sport is played with. McKinnon jumped in and said he'd certainly know Bo Jackson, but he definitely had potential to do well in Major League Baseball. Jose uh, jumped in and said, what's up, guys? Houston Rockets would have never won a ring. They would have had eight straight if Jordan had kept playing. Uh, probably. I mean, I'd, I'd almost guarantee you that. Uh, yeah, but, it, I mean, you can't look back on it because it, Jordan didn't have anything to play for after that third ring. Uh, Joseph Gomez, people still think Tebow is going to make the Mets lineup. Gator fans don't let anything go, I guess. Uh, no, I, don't, I think the Tebow thing is done. I don't think he's going to make the lineup, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, the 95 Eastern Conference Finals against the Magic, when Nick Anderson got that steal and, you know, it, everything just kind of fell apart for the Bulls. Um, Nick Anderson and Penny, I don't know if you noticed this or not, they were both wearing Jordans. Like, they were wearing Jordan 10s. I thought it was hilarious to look, and that's just a minor detail. Obviously, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. This was before the little pennies came out, before uh, Penny had his own shoe deal, all that kind of stuff. But all of the best guards in the NBA were wearing Jordans that year after Jordan retired. So when he came back, he got beat by a team that was outfitted in Jordans. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, The Orlando rivalry. I hate that we did not get to see more of that. That was a fun, up-and-coming rivalry. That team needed somebody like Horace Grant uh, to kind of put them over the over the hump and get them into the finals. I wish if there was one thing 
that that could change about NBA history back in the 90s. I wish that Shaquille O'Neal had not gone to the Lakers because I felt, and obviously you you want to go back and revisionist history. You hope that Penny doesn't get hurt and all that kind of stuff. But when you look at all that, the Orlando Magic were a fun, really good basketball team. Like, do you remember watching that team back in 95, 96? Yeah, yeah they were good. They were they were unbelievable. Uh, I would have loved to have seen, you know, Penny and, and that bunch grow, in him and Shaq, uh, into one of these, you know, build up the way that the Bulls did. And I don't know that they had the same drive. Nobody has the same drive as Michael Jordan. But, uh, but that was a lot of fun, and I, it kind of made me a little nostalgic. Uh, the off-season shooting of Space Jam... Those pickup games, did that stand out to you at all? Yeah, so I can't believe that we the so it's been reported the only footage that anybody got of those pickup games was exactly what was shown last night. Yep you you have a studio with ninety cameras floating around and ninety cameramen floating around and everybody's on a damn break. And nobody thinks, hey, let's turn one of these cameras on. Yep. Nobody. Yep. That's Matthew we got Miller. About, we got about yeah. three minutes of total footage, and yeah. that's it. I would love to have seen that. Matt Miller said, but this. I'll tell you this: he Jordan's said the Space mentality. Jam this is where this is where he's not just the ultimate killer. Okay, oh, he's yeah. not just the most ruthless and brutal competitor on the planet. He's. He's also one of the smartest. He knew, I got to get back in shape. The only way I'm going to get back in shape is just playing. I can't just work out. I got to get my body back into basketball body, not baseball body anymore. All right? Also, I got no game film on these young bucks, okay? He he didn't have a whole lot on Reggie Miller. He didn't have a whole lot on on some of these guys that just now starting to become stars, okay? So what do you do? You invite them in. You spend all summer playing with them. Yeah. And you learn this is their tendencies. Oh, he's got that move. Oh, he's got this move. All right, now I got him. Now I got them all. Good job. Good job. Yeah, he took notes on everybody. Had had yeah. had game. Well, not footage, but he he took notes. No. He knew well, what he to remembered expect. it all. He yeah. remembers it all. I don't know that he ever wrote anything down. He just he just knows what the tendencies are. Yeah, he 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 just yeah. he just knows basketball better than any person alive. Miller, uh, Matt Miller said those Space Jam practices would have been amazing to watch, and Nick Anderson after that 95 finals was never the same after missing four straight free throws. Yeah, 100%. Uh, he also said, Bill Simmons said it's the only footage apparently, like Chris just said, MJ was probably gambling on him, that's why. So, laughy cry face or whatever. Matt said, uh, all those guys out in California are Teamsters. They don't work when they're not required. <laughs> Oh, I'm not Lord. asking you to work for the studio. Wouldn't it, how, how much money do you think that guy could have gotten if he'd thrown a blank tape in there and just hit record? Yeah. Oh, I mean, just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Money. I mean, Jordan would have probably paid him a fortune just to buy it back from him. Oh, yeah. 100%. McKinnon jumps in. He said, uh, I actually uh, got to meet Sean Bradley a couple times, spend some legitimate time with him as a kid at Dallas Mavericks basketball camps. Genuinely nice guy, and it is impossible to describe how freaking tall that guy is. Yeah, he was like, what, 7'7"? Seven, seven? And the guy was ridiculous. Yeah. Just ridiculous. Uh, so the, the Space Jam thing, kind of similar to what happened with LeBron James, right? Had a down year, went out, started filming, and everybody, of course, was talking about all these other guys can't go out and film with him because you're not going to be able to train. You need to be getting better, da 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 It's like, like surely there's an, an off-season, a downtime at some point. Well, he goes out, he records Space Jam, just like Jordan did over a summer, and comes back the next year. I mean, the the Lakers were forty nine and fourteen before the season was stopped. Like LeBron was having basically an MVP kind of year. So, kind of curious. I don't, I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that his recording of Space Jam has anything to do with that. No, 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 no. I don't think the recording of Space Jam itself. I do wonder if going out there, getting away from everything else, and setting up. Your, your own workout spot, and you've got a, a schedule that you adhere to, makes you a little more disciplined, gets you into the right frame of mind. Just I think these guys do that already. LeBron, LeBron already takes care of his body better than anybody has ever taken care of their body in basketball. You might be right about that. I mean, Jordan, remember, 
early on in this documentary. Jordan had won a couple. No, he didn't. He he was on the cusp of trying to beat the bad boy Pistons before he ever started. He was the best player in basketball before he ever started lifting weights. Yeah. Oh, and on top Could of you that, imagine a player today not lifting weights until they've been in the league for seven years. The, the man was out smoking cigars right after games, drinking beers. Like he was staying out all night you and know, before at the games. Whatever. Yeah, I mean it's just crazy. So it, it's just so how 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 people take care of their bodies today. Him making that movie now, he's already on a regiment. He's already on a schedule. Yeah. And he's been on one for the last ten years. That that hasn't changed at all. This That's, movie didn't change anything for LeBron. You he might just, be right. He he missed most of last year. He's rested. He's taken yeah. care of. He's real well rested. Um, the scene of Jordan talking about how his teammates felt about him, and then his quote that winning has a price. Very telling on the mentality that Michael Jordan has, and and I don't think anybody else on the planet loves to win as much as as he does. Like I think Kobe might have been a close second, but, but after Kobe, Kobe got it from him, well, it, yeah, Kobe got it from him. But it's it's also something that's got to be born in you. You can't learn yeah, that. Like that's the thing. Hey, before Jordan, nobody saw anybody like that. Everybody who's come after that has the luxury of saying this guy was my idol, and I watched how he did it. Jordan never saw anybody work like that, and to and to have that kind of that kind of tenacity and that kind of killer instinct. I mean, Larry Bird was always known as the hardest working guy in the NBA. That was during the season. Yeah. In the off season, he was a farm boy, went down, rode a tractor in Indiana. Okay. So like he, it, he wasn't doing this year round like Jordan was. He, yeah. he just wasn't. No, no, you're right. You're right. McKinnon said, reminds me of the picture of the chief's quarterback smoking a cigarette, drinking a beer at halftime of Super Bowl one. Yeah. <laughs> Time's My, a little different. I've said this before, I and and so we we texted back and forth a little bit this morning about, about this thing. It, I'll, I'll let you keep going through it, but part of it is is I I believe that Jordan is the. I don't know that I've ever known anybody who's ever loved winning like him. I don't know that I've ever loved anything in my life as much as I've watched this man love winning. Yeah, it, it really makes you stop and think, like. What am I dedicated to as much as he was to winning? Nothing. No, the, the answer to that is nothing because if it was, we'd be better at it. Yeah. I say this all the time on the show. I believe this with all my heart. All greatness takes great sacrifice. And when Jordan choked up at the end of that and said, we got to take a break, he that's that's the truth. That's what he's saying. It's winning has a price. Yeah. If you're not willing to, to give something up, you're never going to get greatness. Yeah. And he wasn't playing for bullshit. He wasn't playing for a paycheck. He wasn't playing for anything other than to win. being the best. Not not this year, but being the best to ever do it ever again. Matt Miller asked a very interesting question. He said, how many guys off the top of your head were more talented than Jordan but weren't willing to make the sacrifice? That is I would a, venture to say that's come behind him a lot. Yeah, I, I think. It, but just because, because people, people are, take care just, of their bodies so much better than he ever did. Yeah, I, well, I think there's so much more that's known now yep. um, about how to work out and to do these things. Yeah. yeah I, I bet, I bet a lot. I, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I can't even think of anybody off the top of my head. That's more talented. Uh, <laughs> Damien said MJ was hanging around Rodman too much. That's the reason he's been that way. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing some of those things before he met the worm. All right. Matt, I do was seen smoking cigars way before Rodman got there. Matt Miller said Shaq is the first to come to mind. Uh, Shaq still won. What did he win? Three? He won three titles, right? No, Shaq no, won four. like five. Four. No, I think I think it was four. He won one with the Heat and he won three with the Lakers. So oh no, no, no. He got one with the No, no. I don't think so. I think I think that's it. I think that's the only the Yeah, because he because Kobe's got one more than him. Kobe's got five. Um right. as far as the most talented that wasn't able to, or wasn't willing to sacrifice everything, I mean there's there's several in the league right now, now. In my opinion, in my opinion, the most talented basketball player that I've ever watched in my life, but this guy had one of the worst work ethics I've ever seen was Rasheed Wallace. I I love. I was a massive Rasheed fan. That guy was shooting threes as a big man 
before anybody else. Okay. Yeah. The Steph Curry stand on the on the sidelines doing an interview before the game, shooting three pointers from the bench, basically. Rashid, I I I was floor seats at the Cavs to watch the the Pistons play just to sit right behind the, their bench in the entire pregame. He's doing interview after interview after interview, and his whole warm-up is shooting free three-pointers from that point and making about 30% of them. I mean, that guy had raw talent. He had the height that nobody else had, athletic ability nobody else had. Nobody had the combination of size and ability, and I don't know that that guy has ever worked out a day in his life. Oh, yeah. Uh, Matt Miller said uh, uh, Rasheed was never in the in peak physical condition. Uh, he never. said AI is up there, too. I, I think AI wasn't big enough to be able to command a team the same way. Yep. Like, at, you know, you, if, if you want to talk the about the, you know, we're talking about practice. on this like, list would have to be Jordan. You got to be 6'6 six, six or bigger. Yeah, you got to be a big dude to be able to command respect. Because I, I, I think in order to play the level AI played, he had to work to get to that. We might not have seen all that, and we remember him joking around about practice, but you can't be a point guard without putting in the work. You can absolutely be a big man and just go out there and manhandle people and, yeah. and do it. Or Damian, just practice jump shots like Rasheed did. Yeah. And, and you know, that'd be it. Damien said, what about Magic? Um, oh, no, I think Magic was a legendary worker. Yeah, he, he was a worker, you know, initially. You know, I, I think as his seasons oh, were I don't on, know that anybody works late. Well, and I think that's the thing, right? I get, you know, who cares? Uh, da- uh, Tim Duncan, but I, I think Tim Duncan got everything out of himself that he possibly could. He just wouldn't. There was nothing left to give on that. Yeah. No. And so I, I think he worked as hard as he could, but he, they, as far as talent goes, no. Tim Duncan, I don't think was as talented as Michael Jordan. If if Shaquille O'Neal would have learned to shoot free throws and could have shot like fifty percent from the free throw line, if he just worked at that, his scoring numbers would be untouchable right now. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. I agree with you. I mean, we're not. I'm not asking to shoot eighty percent. All right, I'm not asking him to be, you know, Curry or Nash and, and shoot ninety percent. I like a little better than fifty percent, and and he would have had another, I don't know, two three hundred points a year. We'll just bump that thing up to you know sixty percent, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it, it go his scoring title, his scoring numbers just get get almost untouchable. Uh, Matt Miller said Jordan revolutionized offseason working out before guys used training camp in the beginning of the season to get in shape. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Larry Bird was a legendary. Where he was the hardest working person in all the NBA, but he did it through the season. Yeah, because in the off season, like you said, in the off season, he did shit. Yeah, he was back home on the farm. Uh, let's roll through some of these other notes. Jordan laughing at Gary Payton's comments was my favorite part of the documentary thus far. I hadn't seen Jordan really uh, crack and just you know laugh at somebody. And he was laughing at the glove, man. Uh, and that's that's hilarious. That, like that that Sonics. I would watch a ten part uh, ten part documentary on the Sonics. Now I don't know that you know most of the nation would, but a ten part documentary on that Sonics bunch with him and Sean Kemp that would have been something else, man. Because the stories that came out of there were unbelievable. Uh, the motivation stuff. This kind of dives back into what makes him such a relentless worker. Just all that kind of mess. The LeBradford Smith story about him saying, nice game, Mike, and then it comes out that that never actually happened, that was something else. Um, I Okay, here's here's a good question. Now, this is it kind of ties back into the motivation stuff. What do you think Jordan would have done to Scotty for quitting? Um, I think he would be in jail with no parole. So, I... Because that I is have, something I, I was going to bring up. I have an opinion about Scotty, okay? And I had it before this... Before this documentary happened, and it wasn't always a popular one, is Scotty one of the top 50 basketball players of all time? He definitely was before recent times, but there's been some really good basketball players that are better than Scotty in the last five to ten years to take yes. over basketball. I don't know that he's still in the top 50. Probably is, but but it's closer now than it used to be, all right? I My, my knock on Scotty has never been he's – He's not a great basketball player. Let's let's end that, okay? Outstanding, unbelievable, world-class basketball player, okay? My problem with Scotty is this. 
I do believe that that guy rode the jock of Michael Jordan. So I don't, I don't ever, I'm always usually on the player side when it comes to players and owners. Okay. I rarely I'm going to side on owners, but one thing I never do is I never blame the owner when a player signs a bad contract. Yeah. All right. And we heard about when we got through the Scotty stuff in the very first couple of episodes of this about that awful five year, $18 million contract and how low he was being paid and yeah. all this other stuff. Seven, seven years, 18 we, million. Not, we need to not remember. We, we remember that wasn't the, that wasn't the only one. Scotty signed two bad extensions with them. Now, now while we can feel sorry for him for being maybe taken advantage of for the first one, why the hell did he sign the second one? And I'm going to tell you the answer to that because I believe this is true and nobody will convince me otherwise. Scotty didn't want to go play for another team. He would have played for beans for the Bulls as long as he knew Jordan was there because he didn't want to ever play against Jordan because he saw how Jordan crushed other people. I think Scotty is is a weak-minded person. And, And you see it multiple times in this documentary, multiple times throughout Scotty's career when things got hard, he just quit. He yeah. just quit the last season, the 98 season. Well, that's not you sticking it to Jerry and I'm just not going to play for you and you took advantage of me. No, you knew Phil's leaving. Jordan's going to retire. I want to go play somewhere else and get paid, but I don't want to do it until after until after Jordan retires because yeah. he didn't ever want to face Jordan. And so I'm just going to sit out this whole year – and not play because if I play and I play great, then maybe Jerry gets an offer, a trade offer for me. I actually get traded, and then, heaven forbid, I go to a playoff team and have to face this man in the playoffs. I think Scotty, his entire career was terrified. In that situation where he quit, and who was it, Bill Cartwright, that, yeah. that stands up at the end of the game in the locker room in tears, looking at him across the room saying, you quit on me? You quit on me? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, I don't feel bad for him getting those shitty contracts because he signed those contracts. Yeah. Jerry Reinstor even said, you sure you want to do this? Yep, I want security. Well, you don't get security and a lot of money. You get one or the other, and at some point in time, you got to bet on you, and Scotty never bet on him. No. Never. Never did. He Never wanted did. he wanted his cake. He wanted to eat it, too. He wanted everything. That's I wanted to bring up that, that – Scotty Pippen is really kind of being painted in a bad light, but I. But so hey, he I think had a he chance to it. walk it back. He had a chance to walk it back and literally looked at the camera and said, ha, "I'd do the same thing again. I don't know that I'd do it any different." Yeah, which is crazy. It's like you double down on it. Just nuts. Uh, All these years later, you don't regret it enough to even feel bad about quitting on your team in a playoffs. That's just crazy. Crazy to think I about. Can't, I'm really shocked that Jordan. I'm going to tell you this. People think that they, they were BFFs. Oh, no. Remember, Simmons talked about this this morning in, in his podcast. I listened to other guy listened to it here earlier. You said um, it wasn't Scotty when, when he wanted to come back and play. Jordan wanted to come back and play. He didn't go have breakfast with Scotty. He wasn't friends with Scotty. He called BJ. Yeah. And he wouldn't have breakfast with BJ. Okay. We always assume because Scotty was the second best player in the. I'm going to tell you that after he Jordan saw him quit, I don't know that he outside of his basketball acumen, Jordan used him as a pawn because he knew he needed him to win championships. But I don't know that he ever trusted him again. Uh, Matt Miller said, "I highly doubt Ku Coach and Pippen send each other Christmas cards uh, after this and the Olympics." Yeah, I bet. And then Jose on YouTube said, uh, "Pippen is top 20." And then he uh, he put some laughy faces about what he did to Ewing, like yeah the the whole slamming on you know the slam dunk on top of Patrick Ewing, like that was that was something else. We're not, not saying that Pippen elite. I mean a world class player. May, maybe that's one of the guys that you can talk about as far as you know one of those questions. What from happens earlier. if he actually had the work ethic that Jordan had, and he had Jordan in his ass his whole career? Yeah, and still couldn't get him, and still never like never in, made it any better than what he did in a season. Without Michael Jordan, you had a chance to go out there and you still quit on your team with 1.8 seconds left because they didn't because, call a play for because you. Because the ball didn't go to you. And you know why crazy. Phil didn't trust you with the ball? Because so Phil that, saw you every week, week in and week out. Yep. Your I mean, coach knows you way better than we as fans. Anybody or even watching you film, know yourself. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, he knows 
who can hit this shot, who can't. I ain't trusting Scotty with this ball. Now you got that right. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's close out with with these two. His entourage. Uh, there was no entourage. It, it's completely different than than NBA players today because you got everybody around you at all times. He had nobody around him. His entourage was his father, and then his driver and his security. And that's like this whole thing. The look ahead for next week talks about how one of his security guys took over the role of his father after his father passed. Sure. Like, it was, it, the guy would take phone calls for Mike at 2 o'clock in the morning, and Mike's lonely, and he's upset about something. And the guy's wife was like, he'd leave the house at 2 o'clock in the morning to go check on Mike. Like, yep. he had nobody. He didn't trust anybody, and it's crazy to look at that for somebody in that position, especially when, you know, the greatest player in in the most modern era is LeBron James. He's surrounded by everybody. He's got everybody in his ear all the, the time. The, pro- the, the problem is LeBron has been famous since he was 17 years old. Okay. Agreed. And he brought everybody we, up. We, with don't, him. we don't know how many people have been around him are there for the paycheck or are there for real. Jordan, A, and Jordan's a really hard person to be around. I mean, we've found this. We've watched this documentary, and you, anybody who knows Jordan, he's he's so competitive. I, I'm going to bet he's a really tough hang, and be, because of that, you know, well, and, and you kind of you got to be on eggshells that all time because if you say one wrong thing, your friendship he is didn't done. get super rich enough to buy his friends. I mean, remember, LeBron James turned 18 years old and was given a hundred million dollar contract and a Hummer from Gatorade, okay, and Nike. So like. He Jordan didn't have that kind of money until midway through his career, late in his career. I mean, he's yeah. seven years in the league making two, three million dollars a year. Yeah, no, that's true. I that mean, is, he, he was that always is a not buying entourage money. Now you're right. Uh Damian Estrada, by the way, said, Do y'all think uh if Pippen was traded for McGrady, they would still win championships? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Yep. I think I think you just had to have pieces around Michael Jordan. Jordan. Like, it, I don't think it was necessarily that it was Rodman because I think you could have put a couple of other guys in that same spot and it would have been fine. I mean, they won it with Horace Grant. Like, I'll tell you this. I don't know that. I think I think the reason Rodman was there for the last two championships because everybody assumed Rodman was going to be done after that. For, it was a one-and-done thing for him. Every, that was a universal thought. And the reason he wasn't one-and-done is because they couldn't find anybody else to do what Rodman did. If yeah, they I mean, could have, right. they would have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it see. still took pieces around him. He, Tracy McGrady is not some slouch. We're not replacing Dennis uh, uh, Scotty Pippen with a slouch. You're, you're replacing him with a guy who's much younger than him that, that has a fire in his belly as opposed to a guy that's on the back end of his career. That's already won, you know, four uh, that's titles. That's already yeah. won a lot, yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 think, I think we're looking at, at different things when you're talking about if that deal could have gotten made, so. Uh, and the last thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, and I wrote this down because it, it just kind of surprised me. You know, they talk about Jordan's kids and the whole Father's Day thing and everything else. Still no mention of his uh, of his ex-wife. Um, well, and they barely talk about his kids. I mean, it barely. Ba- literally, yeah. they showed his kid with the sign. That's the list of talking about his kids. Yeah, and, and he may want that, but it, right. it lets you know this is a Jordan documentary. This is not a Bulls documentary. This is a Jordan documentary. And he kind of decided, he and Nike, I believe, decided who goes in it and who doesn't because we talked last week about Sonny Vaccaro not being on it. And now his ex-wife, who, you know, they, they had a, they tried but he, to. he doesn't have his kids in there either. I mean, that, that, yeah. what, what they showed last night is not putting his kids in the documentary. No. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're I right. Mean, that, they literally showed a picture of his child a hold holding a sign. a sign up. That's a, yeah, you got a valid point. Now they do show his his mom and his family uh multiple times, but yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was a little strange. Uh all in all, I think the last two episodes, 7 and 8, were the most riveting of the entire documentary so far. Uh So it, I text you I text you this crazy. morning. Yeah. And I said last night for, first thing I said was I I I thought about all night about how we how fortunate we are of our age, late 30s, early 40s, 
we we've seen Tom Brady, the the greatest football player ever. We've seen um, Wayne Gretzky, the the unquestionable best hockey player of all time. We've seen Tiger Woods, someone who is so relentless when he was on top, just unbeatable. All of them pale, pale in comparison to the ruthlessness and killer instinct that Jordan had. Oh yeah. We have never in our life. I, I thought about this last night. I said, I used to say all the time and I still say it all the time. They don't make men like they used to. All right. They, yeah. they just don't. All right. They were tougher. I, every generation that comes after me, there are tough guys, but for the most part, they don't make people as tough as they used to make them. Okay. When God made Jordan, they've never made anybody like him before. And he never made anybody like him after. I he agree. just, he just didn't. Well, we've never seen anything like that before. The other thing that I thought all night long, I laid in bed and I didn't sleep much at all. All I kept thinking is Jordan after game was a game six. Yeah. Riling on the floor, face buried in a basketball in the training room, weeping, weeping into a basketball after winning his fifth title, but the first one without that was, his dad. That was the fourth one. Yeah. Fourth title. So, fourth title. That's yeah, right. First, That's the fourth first title. one first, back. The first of the new three, Pete. Father's Day, not having his dad. And we've seen that video before. That video has been out in the ether. We've never heard the footage. We never heard Jordan weep like that. Yeah. We never heard that cry. I didn't sleep last night because all I kept thinking of this guy that I idolized, that I thought was a robot, that I thought was a machine, that I thought was it's fitting that he made Space Jam because he's the one that's not of this world. He's yeah. not natural. There, There is – God couldn't have made two people any more – different than Jordan and me. When I saw him crying his eyes out on the floor, I thought we are the same species. Yeah. It, it definitely made him more human. It um, was, it was something that I'm never going to forget. It, it's not, I've seen that picture, but I guess I just kind of thought it was one of those still quiet moments because we've never had sound with it. And then you got the sound last night, and it totally changed my opinion of that image that I've seen for decades. And when I hear him blubbering into this basketball, and I just think, oh, no. Oh, no, this is not what I thought it was. And I didn't handle it well. I mean, it it kind of, I mean, it kind of fucked little... me up. Yeah, I can yeah. I can believe that. I mean, because it's it really, it it obviously it tugs at the heartstrings a little bit. But it just kind of helps you realize that he's not that much different than anybody else. It's just he has a drive and a work ethic unlike anybody else. That's so what I thought. The dedication. I've never loved anything the way he loved winning. Yeah. I've never loved anything. I've hurt like that before from losing things. I've, I've never won anything or had anything good happen to me that caused me to weep like that. Never. Let's, uh, let's dive into these YouTube comments. Matt Miller said, hard times make hard men. Hard men make soft times. Soft times make soft men. It's a cycle. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, it's society nowadays, 100%. Like, it, we, we don't have to be hard. I grew up a pretty hard situation. Not that I want anybody to feel sorry for me. But look, I, I definitely didn't grow up the easy way. But... I'm absolutely not hard by any stretch of the imagination in any yeah. way, shape, form, or fashion. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think more highly of you than you do of yourself sometimes. You you might. You might. That's it. You you've done pretty well for yourself, man. I've like done you, great worked, for myself. Oh, no, no, no. That that is not what I'm saying. I'm just not a hard person, not a tough person. Uh Jose said MJ needed Pippin like LeBron needs everybody. Um yeah. We're going to disagree there. McKinnon said, here we go. Tom is still not the greatest football player. Come on now, Chris. God, Maybe a top five quarterback in regards to actual skills and player abilities. Top five quarterback? Okay. In we're, regards, we're done. Hold on. In regards to championships, he's undoubtedly the best. Without Belichick, he's not what we see today. He's still amazing to watch, and I appreciate being able to physically watch him play. Um, and then 
<laughs> then Damian Estrada said, damn it, God, why did you make Tom Brady? Uh, ben has an interesting question. He said Arnold Palmer in the 60s. I don't know. I still think I Tiger. Know. I can't speak to that because I've never saw it other than other than highlight reels. And was Arnold Palmer that much better than Jack Nicholson? I, I don't I I think you take Tiger in his prime against Ta- Arnold Tiger's Palmer. Tiger's the most ruthless golfer Jack in his seen. time. Then yeah, I I think I think Tiger is the best of all. But time I don't know. I can't prime. speak to Arnold. I never watched him play. I seen highlights, but the problem with th- highlights are is you can make anybody look like a badass with highlights. Right, here we go. Matt Matt Miller found the uh, found the quote. It said, uh, "Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men, and weak men create hard times." Yeah, uh, McKinnon said, "Love you, Chris. Just got to wash them uh, hard to swallow pills down with some good bourbon." Like. <laughs> There's nothing hard to swallow. It's just not real. That's a magic pill. That's a that's a beanstalk that doesn't exist. Top five quarterback. I swear. Maybe. We, maybe. Use we have that gone word. super long today. Let's try and roll through uh, these last two topics here. Uh, Matt said, Bill Kazmaier is the world's strongest man. He was banned because he was so strong. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's, 